Okay, so we've done the DSP configuration screen for the, the DSP matrix mixer, and now we'll actually have a look at the amplifier. Okay, so here we are. We're going to open up the DSP for the amplifier. You'll need to enter a uh, password for the system to get administrator rights so you can actually access the uh, advanced features. Um, here is the DSP setup screen underneath the configuration file again. And here it is. It looks pretty similar to what you had before, usual suspects. Inputs 1, 2, 3, 4, outputs 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so it's a 4 by, in this case, a 125 amplifier that we're using, um, but also it's the same software for the 220. Now, what you'll notice here is that you can change your input name. So this, this unit could be actually used standalone uh, by itself. So we could actually put a, you know, a SDD player or um, a radio microphone directly into the unit here. Um, and actually on the same on the output side, you can rename the area. So the unit could be used there. The reason why that is, is because of this screen. This is now your mix input screen. So if we were using this standalone, uh, we could actually name this and actually have this as a uh, you know CD whoop, CD player. Uh, this one could be a SDT player. Um, this one could be uh, radio mic. Um, etc. etc. Now in the mix screen, you can see that those names actually come up here and I can actually mix for each output, so each output of the system, so this is output number one as it says up in the top corner, um, we can actually mix in and create a mix of any of those four inputs to that one area and I can take those mutes off and I'll be creating a mix there in the system, which is pretty cool. On the override section, that's just uh, for another input into the system um, that overrides everything. So you can actually have that on or have that off entirely up to you for the override section. And there's also a pink noise generator available to you for, uh, for tuning of systems. So you can actually have that on or have that off. But again, you can mix any of those four inputs to any one output for all of the outputs. So you can actually have, this is now zone or output two and we can actually you know, mix whatever you want. Standard, as in uh, default, the system comes one to one. It's actually configured, uh, output, input one goes to output one only. Input two goes to output two only. That's how it comes in that matrix configuration, but you can actually mix. So this is a mixing matrix amplifier with DSP. Big mouthful, but it's a very, very powerful system. Again, you have crossovers as you did before with the processor exactly the same uh, you have your delay again another 120 milliseconds so if you wanted to extend further than uh, 41 or 42 meters uh, or 140 odd feet um, you could actually use these amplifiers to then delay further down the line in the system creating twice the distance that you would use again uh, again, another dynamic range compressor on the output, which can be used as a limiter, and another output file here. I mean, we saw those before, no need to go through them. But the EQ is slightly different. The slight differences with this EQ is that it is eight filters, not seven. Eight filters, just in case you, again, don't want to use any of our excellent uh, EV Dynacord Bosch speaker product and you want to attempt to use somebody else's, that's fine. Um, but you will need significant amount of EQ in that area, so you have eight available to you. Again, drag and drop um, between these areas here, so you can drag drop between. This feature here, Bass Enhance. Bass Enhance uh, is an excellent feature um, to create in background music systems, low end frequency enhancement. So what actually this feature does is that it is a dynamic EQ. Um, this dynamic ranging EQ, uh, let me give you, a, give you an example. So within a bar um, setup, 
if you were EQing a speaker system within a bar or background music area, you would turn it up to its Friday night level or its, uh, its peak or optimum level that it would be used at. So within that, you would create your EQ curve and it would sound very, very good. The problem is it's not always Friday night or Saturday night in the bar. So therefore it gets turned down at lunch times or on Wednesdays or whatever it happens to be. When you turn the system down from its optimal EQ, it starts to sound thin because that EQ has less uh, impression upon the, or it becomes less important to what's actually coming through the system. So what Bass Enhance does is it actually increases a, uh, a low frequency curve and actually boosts the low frequencies. So no longer is it now thin because it's been turned down, it actually creates a lot more warmth and depth to the system while it's been turned down. Now when it goes back to the Friday night optimal level, it takes that EQ out proportionally. So if you turn it down, the EQ gets engaged, and you turn it back up, the EQ gets disengaged. When you use Bass Enhance, we suggest you actually engage it before you start doing your EQ curve. This allows the EQ to actually be there uh, prior to you actually configuring the system. So you would include Bass Enhance, take a bypass off, do your curve here. That sounds wonderful. That means that uh, you can take Bass Enhance on and off. You won't see it on screen. It's a separate filter altogether. And there you go. So that's a, an excellent feature that the amplifier has. Um, and it's slightly different from the uh, from the uh, DSP matrix mixer. Okay, so that's the end of the DSP configuration pages for the planner matrix system uh, for the amplifiers and the DSP matrix mixer. Bosch. Invented for life.